This is Liz Colburn, host of The Morning Uplift. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public Health Media. This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Confessions of a Military Spouse, where we dig deep and talk about the unspoken hard truths of what it's really like to be a military spouse. A new show comes out bi-weekly. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Confessions of a Military Spouse. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. What is up, everyone? It's Julianne Condia. Thanks for tuning in. If you could screenshot this podcast and upload it to your Instagram stories and tag me, that would be everything. If you could send this episode to a friend, that is how this podcast is growing, is by you and you leaving a review and a rating helps so much. So thank you for making this podcast come to life. I think we've had over 10,000 downloads and we have just begun. So you are incredible and I just appreciate you. I love being able to share my experiences and story and journey with you in hopes that you take the risk, in hopes that you live a life of limitless potential, that you take action based on what you hear, where how it speaks to you, that you start being authentic, more authentic, living in your truth, And learning how to not care so much about what other people think or what you think they might think. That you just get to be you and build the dreams that you want and live the life that you crave. And I just appreciate you being a listener. I have a quote for you and it's this, control the controllable and influence the rest. There's a lot of things in life that we cannot control. We cannot control other people. We cannot control the things that are happening for us. However, we can control how we show up every day with the mindset that we have. We can control working on ourselves. You know, people say no to themselves all the time. The reasons why they can't, the reasons why they shouldn't, and they limit themselves And it's so unfortunate, but you can control your habits. You can control whether or not you come home from a long, busy, stressful day of work and crash on the couch or choose to work out instead. You can control that even though you would rather crash on the couch. I call myself couch to coach for a reason. I love the couch. I love laying on it and watching TV. However, when I made my lifestyle switch four and a half years ago, I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision to work out instead, first and foremost. And what I didn't realize is making that decision, it reduced the stress in my life. It reduced the anxious thoughts I had at night. It allowed me to be more joyful, more present. And let me tell you, I feel like I gained more life because I could control what I did with my fitness. You can control the food that you eat. You can control the people that you surround yourself with. You can control how you respond to situations. And so when you control, control the controllable and influence the rest. So meaning when you're around other negative people, you can influence them by living your truth. You can influence them by being more positive. You can influence your classroom and make it a different environment than anywhere else in the school based on how you are as a teacher, how you respond to students who are not listening, right? How you teach, how you connect. I always say I wasn't the smartest teacher in the school that I taught at. That's a fact. That is 100% a fact. Just as much as when someone told me that I shouldn't be in the business that I'm in because I didn't go to school for nutrition or fitness. How dare me, how dare I, right, do something and build a business that's very successful 
based on something I didn't get credentials for, right? But the thing that that person had missed is that I have a, an ability to connect with people. It's not the facts. It's not the credentials that make me successful. It's my connection and belief in other people, right? And so you can control how you show up for that and influence others that aren't doing what you're doing, right? If you, I remember I went on a trip once and I got up every morning at 5 a.m., got my workout done and every meal that we went out to, I ate decently healthy and I was modeling. No one else in, in, on the vacation was doing that. It was just me and I didn't make the excuse that I shouldn't get it done, right? I used to say that, you know, I'm, I'm going on vacation. I can't work out. And now I laugh at that where every vacation I go on, whether it's out of the country or in the country, I work out. It's, that's the, the habit I've created. That sounds so foreign years ago. <laughs> it's so different now. But I could control how I showed up. I could control that, but I also could influence the others, I could tell that they noticed, but sometimes in situations, we want to play it small. It's, it's like, you know, if someone were to ask, Julianne, how's your business going? I could say, it's okay. It's pretty good to minimize myself because I don't want other people to feel insecure based upon my success. And I have to tell you, that doesn't do anything any good for anyone. You lowering yourself because you feel bad and playing it small doesn't help the other people in the room. It's not you being egotistical, right? As long as your heart is in the right place. So control the controllable, influence the rest. Show up as you, show up with everything that you are and don't minimize yourself based on in the situations that you're in, the people that you're around. Don't waver, don't change, and just stay the course, and you will influence them, hopefully, in the best way possible. I think that that is something that we all need to hear, right? We all need to be reminded of that because life hits, life is hard. We cannot control the opinions of other people, but we can control how we respond. We cannot control whether someone else shows up, but we can control how we show up. I even think about that with building a business. And when I first started, I was building a business 100% based on belief. And back then, as I was building a business, I had people I was working with quitting left and right. I couldn't control that. I couldn't control that they didn't see the potential. I couldn't control uh, to help them see what was possible, right? But I could influence them by still showing up. So when I first started, and I think people think, I, I've shared this quote before, that in 10 years you look like an overnight success. I think a lot of people would wish to be where I am right now with my business, but when I first started, it didn't look anything like it looks now. That took a lot of grit, a lot of resilience, a lot of not quitting, and just a continued showing up when it was so massively difficult to do so. And I could control how I showed up. I could control when I lost 35 pounds, I could control doing my workout every single day day. And friend, I just hope that that is something that you needed to be reminded of today because at the end of the day, we cannot rush. We can't rush it. We can't rush the hard. We can't rush the difficult. We can't rush the season that you wish to be out of. This season is making you and it's producing something in you so great and so awesome in that you're developing character. You're developing resilience. You're developing strength. You are developing so much more than you can even begin to even imagine, which is so crazy. The, the struggle that you might be facing is not a life sentence. It's just the beginning of a great story. And I, I have to be reminded of that because 
no matter how much you can control, there's so much that we can't. And in the things that we can't, we just have to trust that it's developing us. It's making us. It's just a part of our beautiful story that allows us to relate to so many other people. As you've seen, I've been very transparent with our journey. And it's not for other people an easy decision to publicly share those stories of loss, of heartache, of, you know, something intimate right? But what I have found in sharing my story is that the pain that I experienced was the beginning of my story. And the journey that we've been on through pregnancy loss to now trying again is giving hope to other people. Uh, Countless times I've had people reach out and just seek advice on how I worked through that and how they they worked through they keep saying emotional setbacks emotional pain and i said you know the hardest thing that i did during that time was self care but i knew if i didn't do self care that i wouldn't get out in, of bed in, the next day so for me self care was my outlet but it was my way of we have to face hard no matter what so i might as well work on myself during the hard, even though that's the last thing that I wanted to do. Sometimes it's just that. It's the last thing we want to do. But maybe that's why we should do it. Because now I look back and I think, dang, I have healed so much through my journey. So when you see me sharing my story, I'm not necessarily reliving the painful times My heart does ache time to time, and I do still cry, but I share my story to connect with the person, the miscarriage mama who just experienced a miscarriage. I share my story of the miscarriage mama who is feeling like this situation has been forgotten about by other people. I'm sharing my story to that miscarriage mama who has nerves with trying again, who is worried about having another miscarriage. I share my story to connect with other women because I've been through it. And because of that, I'm able to relate to them. Your story is so important. You are here for such a magnificent reason. And no story is greater than another. And sometimes I think we do that. We think that You know, my voice doesn't matter. Who am I? You are so significant, handpicked by the king, handpicked by the almighty to be in community with other people who would just need your story to connect with. And friend, you working on yourself is the greatest gift that you could ever give yourself. And you can control the controllable, influence the rest. Even if you cry, even if you're angry, even if you're in pain, you can still control how you show up. Influence the rest. This is not a life sentence. Your character is being developed. You cannot rush this season. You cannot rush out of it. We can't cut corners. You're learning lessons. And these lessons are here to teach you and help people. It's amazing how detailed and how significant your life really is. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Honestly, I really do. And I'm really excited about Rewritten. If you could go to Facebook in the search bar, type in the Rewritten Society, please join. I have vision with it. It will get there. And for this podcast, you rating it, you downloading it, you sharing it with a friend is everything. I love that this podcast is growing organically. That's exactly how I want it to be because the listener, you, you 
are the representation of Rewritten. You are the face of Rewritten, and that means a whole lot to me. Let me know how this episode spoke to you. I can't wait. I will talk to you soon, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Mm-hmm.